All right, um, Dave Rat, and let's talk about power amps. Um, in this video, I'm going to go over how we calculate power, um, the wattage output of an amp, the form basic formulas used, um, and talk about efficiency versus um, power. I mean, um, watts are not really the end of all things. There's um, some other stuff that's equally or not more important when I'm choosing amps and speakers. And let's see what else. Oh, and then I'll do a comparison test that shows the difference in the way power is delivered between a modern power amp and a an older power amp. I've got a Crest 4801 and a PowerSoft T904, and we'll look at the difference in the outputs. Um, it's pretty interesting. Okay, so let's start with um, calculating watts. I mean, watts are basically a measurement of that we use for the power that's coming out of an amp and delivered to the speaker. An amplifier will deliver a different amount of power into a different load, and that'll depend on um, quite a few different factors um, in the amp design. Um, if there's a lot of resistance, if the amp doesn't have a very low internal resistance, it's gonna have a hard time delivering um, power into very low impedance loads, because low impedance loads are gonna be closer to its internal resistance. There's gonna be a lot of heat and uh, wasted energy there. Um, is one of the many factors. Um, so I'm going to draw a little picture here. Um, and this is information you can get elsewhere, but I've covered it here as part of the whole discussion. Uh, you know, you have a sine wave of energy, and here's your ground wire, and uh, or your, your zero volt point. And the amplifier is putting out more and more voltage. Let's say this is 100 volts and this is negative 100 volts. And so the amplifier will put out more voltage up to 100 and then it'll put it down, it'll uh, go down to a negative 100. And this might be a, let's say a 60 Hertz tone. Now the watts the amp's putting out, we're trying to determine how much energy the amp can put out. It's actually the measurement of these spaces here the energy between the um, voltage and the zero point. So now we got to calculate uh, that. We can see this on an oscilloscope. We can turn an amp on and I'll fire it up here. We can um, see, and I've got a light hooked up over here. And we can spread this out and we can see that sine wave there. And we can see if we go up to clipping, I'll bring it down a little bit. And we can see that sine wave. And then if I mute, if I turn it off, we can see where the line is and the residual thing. So that's pretty much what we're looking at here. Um, let me turn off that noise. So now to calculate this out, um, what we'll do is we'll measure the voltage on the oscilloscope or on the meter here, um, an RMS meter. The uh, typical meter might not be perfectly accurate RMS, but with a sine wave, it'll get us close enough. Um, and what the, what the RMS, this is the peak to peak voltage of 200 volts. The RMS voltage is actually going to, we're going to take this guy here, these negatives, and we're going to flip them over so that we end up with this kind of thing. So we take the first thing we're going to do is we're going to we're going to take one half. We're going to divide that 100 peak to 100 negative peak. This 200 volts peak to peak, and we're going to divide it by we're going to multiply it times one half or divide it by two, and that's going to equal 100 volts peak. Okay, and that's what this will be. With all this is what we're looking at. But see this, it's not a straight line. If we just use that 100 volts, we're going to be counting these dead areas that are not actual power. It's um, pauses between these pulsed power um, that's being delivered. And it turns out if we do the math on that, it's actually 
0 0.707, uh, 0 0.707, I'm not going to get into the math for that, times the peak voltage will give you the RMS, the root mean square. Um, so let's go ahead and do a measurement. And let's fire up, let's um, bring up this amp here. We'll bring up the sine wave. And you can see the lights coming on. And, we've, and I've got a forum load plus the light. But you can see it's square waving a little bit there. So I'm going to go right up a peak. Right there is about the clean voltage. I can uh, tighten it up a little bit. And we can see that there. It's almost 150 volts. We'll use 150 volts for that. Um, 150 volts peak to peak. So let's go ahead and calc that out. 150 divided by 2. And we know that's going to come up to be 75. Um, and that's our peak voltage. And then we're going to multiply that times point seven zero seven equals... 53.025. So we can get rid of that. We got 53.025 as our RMS. Now, the next thing we got to do, the next calc, is to convert that RMS voltage into watts. And we know, uh, or you're going to know in a second, it's I have a 4 ohm load on here. So with the 4 ohm load, so we know the voltage, RMS volts, and we know we have a 4 ohm load. And the formula for that, the easy formula for that is voltage squared over resistance equals watts. Uh, I won't get into how that's figured out, but it's pretty much if you want to mess around and come up with that formula, there's two formulas. And if you factor out the current from the two formulas, you'll get it. And the two formulas are that watts equals volts times, and we use I for current watts equals volts times current. And then we also have the other formula, which is volts or E equals current times resistance. And if you do the math um, and take the I out, factor the I out of there, the current out of there, so you've just got watts, volts, and resistance, you'll end up with voltage squared over resistance equals watts. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we've got 53.025 times 53.025 equals 2,811 and change. And we'll take that and divide by 4, which is the resistance, 4 ohms, equals 702, 702.9 watts. Okay. Um, my handwriting is awesome, by the way. Um, all right. So, I mean, it might not be, it's not totally accurate because I really didn't look at exactly if you have like a half a volt more, it's going to calc out to more volts, but um, it's close enough. So we're getting 700 watts out of a single channel driven from this um, Crest 4801. The rating on it is 575 into 4 ohms, but I'm, that's with both channels driven. Um, it's 480 to 575, so we're getting considerably more power than it's rated at, but we're only driving one channel. Um, so there's the math, V voltage squared over resistance. And to get the voltage, you take your peak to peak, divide by 2, and multiply times 0 0.707. So after all this calculation, we figured out the amount of juice these amps can put out. But how important is this power that's being put out? How valuable is that for what we're doing? Um, one aspect to take into consideration that's very important is the efficiency of speakers. Uh, if you have a speaker that in the frequency range that you're going to use it, in the enclosure that you're going to use it, you've got the whatever, the, the full setup, and it's got a hundred and let's say a hundred dB output at one watt, one meter. And you've got another speaker that's 94 
dB one watt one meter. So I'm going to write those down. We've got 94 and we've got 100 dB as your efficiency of the two speakers you're selecting between. You've also got the 94 dB one will handle 2000 watts. And the 100 dB one will only handle 1000 watts. Which of those is going to be more desirable? Which is going to work better? Well, every time you have 3 dB more efficiency, you want 3 dB more output from a speaker. To get that 94 dB speaker to put out 97 dB, you have to double the power. So you're going to have to put 2 watts into it to get 97. And you're going to have to put 4 watts in to get 100 dB. And you put 8 watts in to get 103 and 16 to get 106 and so on, all the way up. What we're seeing is a 6 dB difference between the two. Well, 6 dB difference is four times the power. The 94 dB handles double the power, but the 100 dB 1 watt 1 meter handles half the power, but it's four times more efficient. The, the power rate is four times more. That means that for the 94 dB speaker to get as loud as the 100 dB speaker, it would need to handle 4,000 watts. Your speaker. Okay, maybe a little confusing on the explanation there, but efficiency is very important in making these decisions. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at another aspect. This is kind of fun. So I'm going to turn on both of these amps. We get a little wind noise here. Hopefully all my kludge wires is staying fit. And, and we'll wait for them both to fire up. So what I've got is I've got a the Crest amp and the PowerSoft amp. I've got the inputs wide. And right now I've got a 225 hertz frequency um, generator. I'll crank that up. I'll put 240, 239. Doesn't really matter for what we're doing. Uh, let's clear the screen here. You should be able to see that on the little GoPro. Um, let's turn on the blue trace and bring that down into the range here. And let's bring the red yellow one down into the range here and clear the memory hold. And now what I'm going to do is if I bring this up, we see both of those traces come up and I'll bring them down and we'll see them linger. Look what happens when I pulse this. So I'm going to put a 20 dB pad on, turn this up and I'm going to release the pad and I'm going to let these guys go way into clip or way into full blast. So oof. All right, that didn't work. Let's try this again with uh, yeah, let's try it again. Oh, I know I didn't work. Let's try this again. Let's go slow. So now I've got this. Um, I'm going to take the 20 dB pad off and we'll take a look at what happens. And as we can see here, they're relatively the same, but the Blue Trace has definitely got more output than the Yellow Trace. Um, probably about 30 volts more, It's uh, which is going to calc out to considerably higher voltage. But watch what happens when I don't pulse. Watch what happens if I give it a, um, a longer... So now you can see that the Blue Trace peaks up higher and then drops down lower than the yellow trace. Um, this is a characteristic and a definitive change in the way amplifiers are being built um, from the old amps to the new amps. The old amps, when you look at the specs, 
the older amps, when you look at the specs, if it says 500 watts of channel, typically they will put out 500 watts of channel for a good chunk of time. The newer amps, when they say 500 watts or they say 1,000 watts, they'll put out 1,000 watts for a short period of time and then they'll drop down to a lower level if you leave a continuous signal. Um, in future videos, I will get into showing and listening and determining um, which of those is better. And um, I'm excited to try some of the stuff that um, I haven't done. All right. That'll do for today. And um, thanks for joining.